Well, welcome back. And uh, this is a new rig. This is a DC motor, 150 watts. And this is made out of mild steel rather than aluminium, the flywheel that's attached to it. And it's attached to uh, 1024 um, uh, pulses per revolution quad uh, encoder. I've got a MyRio as usual and I've got this um, I think it's 30 amp each bridge. It takes something like 30 amps. I've got two channels, I'm just using one of the channels. The other channel actually was blown up the last time I used it. And it turns out the other the first channel is fine. So I'm using channel uh, B rather than channel A. I've also got a set point which is like I used before uh, with uh, which is another uh, encoder and I can also use a software set point on the program and I'm going to control it with the real-time controller this time with no FPGA and see how I get on this is the, um, the my real of course and we go over here to the program the front panels there's nothing really to write home about it's just a few control knobs and things but in here we've got uh, we've got a real-time loop which runs at um, five kilohertz. It's a decent sampling interval. You notice I'm using a lot of these. It's, my reel actually uses a lot of these Express VIs, and uh, this one is for the set point encoder. And all you need to do is um, specify if you not well, turn this off and click on it. And uh, here it's uh, set up for um, channel B on the the port B. That's so. If we go back to here, this is this is uh, B, and this is A, the outputs. So it's set up for B, and uh, it, it even shows you the connection diagram, which is quite amazing. It says it's using pin 18 and 22. So you just plug your quad encoder outputs into there, and then you've got it reads a uh, uh, integer, the blue here is the integer signal um, which is proportional to the position of the shaft uh, and all this does is uh, what does that do, oh yeah that gives me a different set point, I can switch between this is a, a true or false where I can switch between the um, encoder input or just the software input and the minus sign, plus minus that's my error in any servo closed loop we've got an error signal and this is the encoder connected to the shaft uh, using another two inputs from the other port uh, we'll talk about the controller in a minute it's also got a filter to low pass filter to um, attenuate any structural resonances this little bit here is the pulse width modulation the nice thing about the pulse width modulation is you can internally set it up. I, I set it up for something reasonably high. It, it, it's getting its, um, this off a hardware clock, so it's not dependent on the sampling frequency, which is really good. Uh, and it tells you it's using pin 27 as well, so it does that for you. So I've set it up for 25 kilohertz, and the input uh, to it, my uh, sort of DC input, will control the um, duty cycle from 0 to 1, 0 to 100 percent duty cycle and you'll notice I put an absolute value in there because my input can go positive and negative and if it does uh, I have to do a little bit of logic here you'll notice there's an inverter here and this is a um, digital out again Express VI and it's using pin 11 and pin 12 and this is to do with the H bridge. There are two pins on the H bridge and um, one of them must be high and the other low for going in one direction or low and high vice versa to go in the opposite direction. So you can either put true or false here and it reverses but of course you have to reverse it. If it's greater than zero then you, you, know, you reverse it. The PWM stays the same and it just the motor just goes in the opposite direction which is like a quite um, it's like having a double power supply if you were in the analog world. There's the stop button, 
Here is a PI controller which I'm using. It's not the one. I started using the one in the MyRio. It was kind of alright. Um, and it should work. But I, I prefer to use um, phase advances and sort of lag. This is really a lag lead controller. Uh, although it's PI, it's, it's merely more of a lag lead. And a phase advance follows it. Um, now, to, you have to sort of tune it in and I just like you do a PID, and I, I set it for a modest uh, frequency uh, bandwidth of about 20 hertz. Um, it's got a low breakpoint frequency of 1 hertz, not very much, and there's a set point here. So I turned it on. I'm going to wait. It's reasonably quiet, hopefully. It's, uh, I'm turning the set point and you'll see that the shaft is turning beautifully, very well damped, following my control, perhaps not as fast as it could be. Uh, I did experiment with the, moving the bandwidth up, but I run into all sorts of res resonances as I can illustrate either again in this, uh, in this film or another one, but there it is following my set point. Okay, I can also put on. I'll switch to the um, software set point over here. We talked about, and uh, that's me changing it, and it should change here. And if I wanted to, I could put a joystick in there. I've got uh, control over various things. If I make the gain too high. I should run into structural resonances. Let's turn it up. Um, nothing so far. Oh, that's because I've still got. And, uh, there, there it goes. There it goes. It's beginning to. It's beginning to resonate. I notice the current is shooting up. 13, 13 amps. Not too bad. It does go up to about 30. I can keep going, um, turn it again up, oh, see the whole thing begins to jump off the table because of the migration set to 26 amps now, I'm going to turn that off, now, I don't think that's actually uh, burnt out, that's just stopped itself for some reason. Turn the power supply off because otherwise it'll um, <laughs> it'll go right off the table. So this is uh, there we go. This is a, a DC motor controlled entirely from the uh, real time controller and uh, not using the FPG at all. Works perfectly well. No problems um, as you would expect really. Um, using a lot of Express VIs, so it's particularly simple. Uh, there's really not much in that diagram. Only thing you've got to watch is to get negative feedback. If you don't have negative feedback, it'll <laughs> you'll know about it, <laughs> uh, and uh, you need to swap two of the wires on the uh, encoder the other way around. Okay. So thank you very much. Bye bye.